Welcome to the latest episode of the Streamline podcast. My guest today is Brie Noble. Now, Brie has founded the Female Musician Academy and is currently putting on the Profitable Musician Summit, which coincidentally starts today. Given how busy you are, Brie, firstly, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the podcast and, and take some time away from, from the summit to let people know about this. For, for anyone who's not familiar with you and your work, could you let us know a little bit about what you do and, and your story and your history in the industry? Sure. So um, first off, I'm a musician. So I um, learned how to build my business as a musician kind of through trial and error. You know, I know Mike understands how that is when you're trying to figure something out and you're not, you don't have any kind of mentor or somebody to show you how to do it. You kind of have to just try a bunch of things and, and figure things out. And so, you know, I really identify with a DIY musician because I spent 10 years trying to figure it out. And a lot of things I did wrong and a lot of things I didn't understand and I was confused about. And so when I finally started figuring out how to build my music as a business, I found that there was a lot of other musicians like me out there that were not knowing how to do it and were frustrated. And so that was kind of why I built the Female Musician Academy. And I just have a heart for female artists. I feel like there's not enough representation in the industry for women. I think it's gotten better. Since I started, you know, my career like in earnest back in like 2005, I I think it really has gotten better. But I do think that we still have a long way to go. Mm-hmm. So that's why I work with females. I just love creating this community where females can support each other and help each other. But I didn't want to just, you know, only stick with females because I have a lot of guys on my list that say like, "Is it okay for me to be on your list?" I'm like, of course it is. And so I wanted to create something that across the board could help musicians. And for me, you know, my brand is the female entrepreneur musician because I was all about how can we as musicians be business people and know that we are entrepreneurs and that we need to act like that. And we're not just responsible for the creative side. We have to figure out how to do the marketing and the business. And so I decided to host this Profitable Musician Summit last year And it was so popular and it really helped a lot of artists get some new income streams up. Because last year that was what we were focusing on. So this year we're talking about all the things that you need to know for a business as far as like, not only how do I make more money, but how am I smarter with my money? How can I be the CEO and really feel in control of my business and make sure that I'm actually making profit and not just income, but then all the money for the expenses is disappearing somehow. So that's kind of my story. And you know, I, I kind of skipped over the fact that I was actually also an accountant in a former life. So I worked in corporate world I was a director of finance for an opera company. So I kind of have both that finance background and music background. But for me, it was really difficult to figure out how to meld them together at first and to be a musician who acts like a business person. So I figured if it was hard for me and I have you know, a degree in both business and, and music, like how hard is it for everybody else? So I wanted to you know, bring these conversations to the forefront to help creatives really learn how to be business people. That's fantastic. And I I love the fact that, you know, obviously you did this yourself and that's how you learned, but you now you're sharing this with other people and more importantly, helping women in the industry as well, because as we know, the, the numbers aren't quite matching up right now. And there's definitely a lot of opportunities out there that we'd love to see more women uh, taking on and, and getting placed in as, as well as with, with their music and getting that support <clears throat> and that supported, excuse me. So I think that's fantastic. And as you mentioned with the summit, we just finished recording as well. I'm actually part of the summit as well, which is kind of why we're here today. I love the fact that it is, uh, they feel like workshops. You know, it's not just listening to people having a conversation that you can actually get to work while, <laughs> while you're, while you're sitting there in this summit online, you're, you're going to be on your computer. You're going to, I've seen some of the material and I feel like it just makes you want to get to work immediately because it gives you everything that you need. And it's amazing that you've made this available for anyone by making it free to sign up as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm all about action. Action taking, like you can learn and learn and learn, but if you don't actually do anything with that, it's not going to help you. So, you know, when I'm 
talking with the people on the summit, or even if they're giving kind of a presentation style kind of masterclass, I am going deep on asking questions. Okay, well, if we do this, then how do we do that? You know, how exactly would we go about doing that? And what would we do next? And I'm always trying to get into the mind of the people watching, thinking, you know, what would they be asking if they had an opportunity to ask questions? Because these are not recorded live. So, you know, you guys don't have an opportunity to ask questions. So I am trying to get into your minds as musicians that are attending to think what would the questions that would be coming up be, as well as the fact that you will have actually an opportunity if you attend the summit to interact with the speakers, because we do have a group, um, a community where the speakers are in the community and you can network with the speakers and ask questions. And it's been kind of fun, people introducing themselves to the speakers and and I kind of think of it as like a, a virtual meet and greet, but without the crowds. Like you don't have to stand in line to talk to any of the speakers. You can just tag them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And the the group that you're talking about on Facebook, I, I am in there and I, I have been active as well. I mean, not just for meeting people that are attending. I, for me, it's given me access to the other speakers who I haven't met before myself. So it's... It's a great opportunity for everyone that's involved and there's no separate group for just the speakers where we're keeping to ourselves. This is everyone that's involved, whether you're participating and viewing or you're speaking, everyone is in this one group. And I love the fact that there is this whole community vibe even before the summit has begun where people are asking questions and and giving answers and it's great to see everyone supporting each other and welcoming each other like that. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity for the speakers as well, like you said, because, you know, if we were at conferences, if we were at a physical conference, which is what we're trying to kind of replicate here, um, we would be trying to talk to each other as well. So, and as you as attendees would want to be talking to the other attendees and and getting to know them and maybe eventually, you know, you might think about doing a co-write or maybe you find someone in your local area and you meet up, you know, so I'm trying to recreate a conference vibe because for those who maybe haven't been able to get away for a conference like me, I mean, I have younger kids. I haven't gone to an actual conference for music for several years. And so, you know, potentially 10 years it's been since I've been to a live conference. And, you know, if you guys are like me and you have those issues or you maybe you work a full-time job or it's just like not feasible to spend the kind of money you would have to spend to fly to a conference and put yourself up in a hotel and the food and all that stuff. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for you to have the full experience. Yeah, that's it. And just adding to that, you're in a room, I say in a room, it's online, but you're, you're, you're in the presence of like-minded people who are in the same position. They're artists, they want to do it themselves, they want to know what they have to do and they're prepared to do it. That's why they've signed up and that's why they're here. They're here to learn, but most importantly, they're going to take that and apply it and actually do it. So if you do find that you connect with someone as a result of being in this group and attending the summit, then you're going to find that they're going to be in a similar frame of mind and probably ready to go to work compared to other people where you may meet them and they say, yeah, I'd I'd love to do that sometime. These are people who are ready to take action and that's exactly Mm -hmm. what they're doing. The first step is signing up for this summit and then the next step is getting to work. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, it's, It's already been a great vibe. We've had the group open for maybe 10 days and you know the conversations going on there are awesome. This sounds like a silly question because it's online, but there's no limit to how many people can sign up. It's not capped at 500 people and then no one else gets access. There could be, you could invite all your friends, you can invite all your band members, everyone can sign up and, and access this and view the streams uh, during these 10 days. Absolutely. Now, I suppose it's it's limited by the uh, the bandwidth of our site, but we're using you know a site that should be able to handle as much as we bring in, so it it, it won't crash. <laughs> we never fantastic. had that happening last year. No, definitely not. And I'm sure you're prepared for it after last year, which was highly successful as well. You know this this isn't the first time. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For people who can't necessarily tune in live 
Do you have an option for them to be able to access this content, let's say in the future, let's say they're going on holidays for the next two weeks and they won't be able to be, be watching while they're on a family vacation. Can they get access to this content in the future as well? Yeah, absolutely. We have what we call the VIP All Access Pass. And what it is is lifetime access to all of the Summit videos, as well as the audios, as well as this fantastic workbook that we've put together, what we, we call action plans. And it's all the, the best takeaways from each speaker. It just kind of gives you a rundown of what's happening if you want to go back and watch certain parts of a video. Um, it's very well put together. It's not like chicken scratch notes. It's like a real workbook. So we're very excited about that. And then, you know, if you do the All Access Pass, we'll also be having a special Q&A afterward to make sure that, you know, if there's any other questions that have come up during the summit, that you're able to get those questions answered. And we'll probably even bring in a few of our speakers for that as well. So that is another benefit of doing it. And even if you're not going to be gone during the summit, you know, you'll find that when you start going to the sessions, there'll be like four or five on a day and you really want to see all of them. And, you know, trying to find time if you work full time to be able to watch all of them and then keep up and then like the next day, even more sessions that you want to go to, you know? So when you go to a live conference, you have to choose, right? You have to choose between, am I going to go to this room or this room, depending on what they're talking about. And with this, if you buy the LXS Pass, you don't have to choose. You can see all 33 of them whenever you want and go back and rewatch them again. Awesome. And, you know, what's important here is, of course, you can access this content for free, but if you do want the convenience of having this, then you can also purchase access ongoing. And the benefit of that is time. If you have something else that you need to do and you can't attend, you can still access this content later. And like Bree mentioned, you've got these fantastic notes as well, which may save you time because it's going to get straight to exactly what you need, those key takeaways from each of these workshops. So for me personally, even though I'm part of the summit, I'm going to be purchasing access myself because I want to learn from these other 32 speakers that are going to be on there. And I don't have time to lock myself away for the next 10 days and <laughs> take in all this content and be frantically typing out notes with everything else that I'm doing. But I do want to act, I, w- I do want to have access to this. And what I like is I look at it this way I'll spend hundreds of dollars, sometimes thousands of dollars to fly to a conference, to book accommodation for myself, and not to mention the price of entry. And I have a great time. I look at this in the same way except for the fact that I always have access to this. So I don't have to go anywhere. I can be sitting at home. I can have a few hours spare and go, I'm, I'm just going to tune in right now and I'm going to watch Rick Barker and, and see what he covered because I couldn't actually get there on the day. So you have to keep in mind that if you are going to invest some money, it's saving you the travel, the accommodation, and it's on your time and your terms. And it's almost like you're the director of this because you can skip to exactly what you need mm-hmm. and and then just get back to doing what you do, which is creating awesome music. Yeah. So, and all of you guys are podcast listeners. So you appreciate the fact that we have downloadable MP3s for every one of them too. So, you know, you've got your notes and you've got your MP3s that you can listen to on the go. For me, I'm a huge podcast listener and I'm always listening while exercising, while cleaning the house, you know, whatever it is that I can do, it always makes it more fun and more educational when I'm listening to a podcast. So same with this, you know, you can take these with you and listen to them and then go back after you've listened and like look at the notes and be like, remind yourself of the important points and then take action. Definitely. And I I love that idea as well. I mean, for many of us as long commutes to shows there's long commutes to work because many of us have day jobs as well and you know we're doing this on the side and we're building it up to the point where we can become full-time musicians so to be able to listen while you're traveling driving on the bus the train etc that that's going to be a huge help as well uh, Bree, I wanted to talk about some of the speakers that are going to be on here that uh, we, we'll get access to would you mind sharing some of those Absolutely. Actually, first, I'd love to hear, because I know you know who the speakers are. Are there any that you're excited about hearing? 
Yeah, look, the two to come to mind would be Rick Barker and Kevin Bruner. So Rick Barker, former manager of Taylor Swift in her early years, really when she was 15 to 17, gave her her head start, got her on radio and really got her name out there. Uh, He's got not only a fantastic story and he's a very inspiring individual, but his hustle and his drive and the way that he thinks is amazing because... He, he, you talk about Instagram Live with him and he goes, it's my own TV show. I host it. I decide when I want to go on air, when I don't, who I want to bring on to my show as a guest. And I, I just tell people the time and they tune in and no one can ever take that away from me. No one's ever going to ax my show because it's on Instagram. So I always learn so much from Rick and Sometimes it's information you know, but he just has a different approach to it or a different way of looking at it that's so unique. And then, of course, Kevin Bruner, VP of Marketing at CD Baby, uh, also plays in multiple bands, uh, Small Town Poets as well. He's doing this. He's not just talking about this. He is actually doing this and living this. So he's the artist. He's promoting his own music. Obviously, he's using CD Baby, so he's independent. 100%. He owns his masters, he owns his publishing, and he's putting in all this work. So to hear from someone who's actually doing all of this and doing it successfully is, is highly valuable. And you know, he's always, he's like an open book. Every, every time I speak with Kevin, it's just nonstop. Just, I I feel like I, I have to stop him and take notes. He is a bit of a whiz with marketing as well. I noticed really in these last few years, he's been attending a lot of marketing conferences, which fortunately I haven't had to start attending those as well. And he's more than happy to give this information up and explain it in a way that actually makes sense to a guy like me who I I would admit Facebook pixels scare the hell out of me. Marketing across all of these services, I go, look, I, I know my stuff about playlists and I'm more than happy to share that, but don't come asking me about how you're going to sell 10,000 items of merchandise by running a Google ad campaign. <laughs> Ask Kevin. Ask Kevin because he would have done that. Yeah, no, Kevin is is interesting because like you said, he's got the perspective of an artist, but also he's got all the data and experience working with CD Baby. So he sees across the board what all these artists are doing. You know, and he has a unique, especially around around Spotify, he has a unique perspective because he's seen what's working for CD Baby artists on things like Spotify or Pandora or, you know, what what's actually selling, you know, are they selling, are people still selling digital stuff? Are people selling actual CDs, you know? And so we get into a lot of that really specific stuff and... I ask him a lot of questions about things that he's tested and what's worked for them and, you know, ad campaigns and things like that. So that is definitely a great one to bring up. And then Rick, I just love Rick because, and he was one of our speakers last year on the summit. He's like, no fluff, no BS. Yes. He'll tell it like, he'll tell it to you straight. He'll like, if you've got these like pie in the sky beliefs or if you've got these wrong beliefs, he'll like just knock them down and be like, it's better that I do this now you know, before you've wasted a lot of time and money on things that aren't making sense for you, you know, and I appreciate that about him. Yeah, definitely. And for people to have access to someone like Rick, who is a consultant to some high level musicians in the industry and people at various labels in in his time as well, he doesn't come cheap. And for, for Rick to be accessible completely free if you register for the summit and you jump in is just mind-blowing. It's a great opportunity to, if you've ever seen him talking about his course or his book or other things that he does and you go, I want to know a bit more about this guy first. I want to see how much he knows. Go in there. He's going to blow your mind. Yeah, totally. And, and, when you were talking about, you know, the marketing side and, you know, the complexities of the pixel and things like that, someone that's going to be really great on this summit is Corinne from Indiepreneur because we talk about data and how to understand data and how the data really shows you exactly the journey that your fan is going on with you. You know, from just first discovering you 
And, you know, then what do they do next? And, you know, maybe they watch a video. And then after that, maybe then you can get them on your email list. And then you can, you know, potentially get them to, you know, follow you on Spotify. And then maybe the next thing is that they, you know, buy something from you or they attend a show. And just being able to kind of track this fan discovery journey, like I like to call it, using data. It's absolutely amazing that we have the ability to do that with the kind of platforms we have online. And I think it's really exciting to a lot of people, but it's, like you said, intimidating. And so she really puts it in a way that the average person can understand how we can use this data to help us in trying to actually make money from our fans. Definitely. Another person I wanted to add in there as well was Ariel Hyatt from Cyber PR. Ariel and I spoke recently and connected and um, just mind-blowing. I, I was meant to be contributing some content for her and I ended up just sitting back at one point and just going, wait a minute, who's contributing here? Because I was just <laughs> learning so much from Ariel as well. Yeah, it's, um, it's cool because you and Ariel yeah. are kind of like the the tandem discussion on Spotify and you guys both give a very different pieces of information about how to use Spotify. And if you use what we talk about in our session together with what I talk about with Ariel together, it gives you a perfect big picture of how you can use Spotify and really take advantage of it as an artist. Yeah, it's pretty amazing to see, you know, a lot of these people. So obviously Kevin at CD Baby, Ariel at Cyber PR, they're, do- they're doing some big things and they're usually very hard to reach out to unless you're actually working with some of these people, not specifically Ariel or Kevin. Uh, so this is a great way to get access to them and also learn from them without necessarily having to go and, and purchase their time as a consultant or purchase their services. It's a way to test them out. Uh, learn from them, see what they're about, get some value from them, and then decide. You never know. You may go and use their services in the future as a result. I always say to people, I say, before you engage anyone's services in the industry, do some research. Well, this is one way to do that, 100%. Go in there. Everyone's opening up. They're sharing what they know. They're giving you this information. Do of it as you wish. If you get value from it, you may continue to follow them as well. And a lot of people on here, I'm grateful to be on there because... Not only am I helping a number of artists, but I'm going to see followers in return as well on what I'm doing. So it's really a win-win and and I'm grateful to be part of this as well. Yeah. I mean, when you're thinking about, like you said, services that you might want to engage in the future, like I have several people on here who are actually not in the music industry, but they're in the finance industry, Mm. some of which also work specifically with musicians. I've got somebody who does finances and taxes for musicians. Um, She's from a company called Growth Group. And she's actually, she specifically focuses on doing that for musicians and labels. And so, you know, if you feel like when you attend the summit and you're learning about finances and and you just feel like it's just still a little bit out of your realm, like this is a way for you to say like, oh, maybe I should work with Alexis or maybe I should work with Tiana, who's also another finance person who's talking about you know, how to put your accounting systems in place and all this stuff that maybe doesn't sound sexy and exciting to you guys as summit attendees, but it's things that I know you guys need. And when you start learning from these people, maybe you'll start to feel more comfortable with it and like, oh, this isn't as hard as I made it out to be. Yeah, definitely. I I probably shouldn't have done this because it's really distracting, but I had the website up as a reference point and (laughs) I'm looking at the the speakers and I realized that there's other people on there I didn't even know were part of this. So if you saw a little excited reaction... uh, You know, I'm just having a look. Oh, and I, I thought see. it was when we were talking about accounting that got you excited. No. Well, that was exciting because I hate <laughs> it. And if somebody can make me like it by making it easier, then I am all ears because <laughs> it, it scares me. And I'm sure that's the same for a lot of artists. They go, oh, you know, it's almost like more money, more problems. They go, oh, if I get all this money, what happens at tax time? What do, what do I do? <laughs> you know, what can I claim? What can't I? And I go, well, look, you've made money, that that shouldn't be a problem. You just need some advice. So I'm excited for that. But looking at some of the other speakers as well, I see Sherry Hu as well. 
probably one of my favorite writers. No, mm. I'm, I'm going to take that back. Definitely my favorite writer as far as her newsletter that comes out and as far as her podcast now as well, which is fantastic. Oh, uh, I didn't even know she had a podcast. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, it's called Water and Music. And Oh, uh, yes. I know her. Isn't her newsletter also called it, Exactly. So uh-huh. it's really easy to find. But just her knowledge is mind-blowing. I, I told her one time, I said, you know, I know we're friends and I enjoy hanging out with you, but sometimes... I get a little scared because you know so much that I'm scared my, my brain's well, going to explode. The and- thing is that she's really young too. And I, when oh, I was yeah. actually, I was interviewing uh, on Ryan Carella's podcast, who's also a speaker. And he said, when I grow up, I want to be Sherry who, and he's like, I don't know, 15, she, 15 years older than her. But yeah. you know, she, he's just like so impressed with her knowledge. Yeah, that's it. And it's funny, you know, a lot of it is opinion as well, but a lot of people are aligned with her opinions and she's really good at knowing what's coming next and how that might look and how it's going to work. And she does have a way of explaining it that people can understand as well. So when I said my, you know, I feel like my brain's going to explode when she starts talking about all this stuff, it's just because there's so much going on that you don't necessarily know about yet in music and tech. Right. She's very in tune with the tech. Exactly. And so to hear about all these new things and and know that uh, the way that we access music and content in the future could change, it's it's mind-blowing stuff. It really is. I, I feel like she could record something now, you'd come back in two years and then it would be relevant because she's so mm. far ahead. She knows what's coming. It's It's fantastic. So really excited to see what Sherry has to contribute. And then I was also having a look and I saw Ari Herstand. So obviously Ari with his book and I believe the second edition is coming out later this year. Yes. So it's perfect timing really because I, I want to know what else he's been working on. And I, I keep seeing him popping up everywhere. He's really passionate about artists and DIY. And what I like is, once again, another person who's no BS. If, mm-hmm. if there's a service that needs to be called out, um, oh, yeah. he'll investigate and he'll call them out. And I actually started calling him the consumer reports of the music industry. Yes, Yes, I, that's it. And the good thing is he doesn't just call them out. He does his research and he'll actually mm-hmm. test it out himself. So he's the kind of person that if I needed to know about a particular service before I engage with them, I would look and see what he said because he's he's done it all. He's compared distributors. He's compared uh, Spotify PR people, uh, you know, third-party PR people, of course. And and he's he really has done it all. And he's he's helped to save a lot of people a lot of time and a lot of pain. And he doesn't ask for anything in return. Yep. Right. Yep. No, and he really he really brings it. Like in the conversation that I have with him, he doesn't hold anything back. And he talks a lot about how to to really fill your shows up when you're first performing locally and then how you can expand upon that. But one really great conversation that we have is about how to not get taken advantage of by venues that try to do the whole pay to play thing. Mm. And we really get into that that conversation, which is which is really interesting because I, I think he's gonna again like save a lot of musicians a lot of heartache if they just listen to what he has to say so they can avoid getting into these situations. Yeah, definitely. And what you do now can have a catastrophic effect on what happens to you in the future. If you set your price at zero dollars right now, it's a lot harder to start charging people, yeah. even if you are getting more established and and getting a significant following. So I'm I'm looking forward to tuning into that one as well. I mean look, I'm I'm looking forward to tuning into all of them. Who are we kidding? But yeah. it's it's crazy. I'm gonna stop looking at this list of speakers because every time I do I see someone else that I, I, I want to tune into. So um is there Anything specific that you would like to mention about the summit as far as, I mean, we've talked about some of the speakers that I'm really excited about and I know that you've jumped in there as well, but is there anything that you would say is a cannot miss? You you have to see this one. Oh man, it's so hard to choose. I mean, I would say- <laughs> I know, I've put you on the spot there. It's, a, it's hard to pick a favorite because you obviously yeah. picked everyone because they're your favorites, uh, hopefully. So. <laughs> I would say like one of the hardest hitting days, well, probably, probably the fifth, we just released the, um, the agenda. So if anyone signs up for the summit, they'll see the schedule of when everybody is speaking. But you know, day five, which is with Ari Herstand, uh, Rick Barker and Nancy Moran, 
who also talks about how you can save money while you're on tour. So we're talking about how you can make more money and then how much you can actually save while you're on tour. Mm. So you come home with the most money. And then um, Sawyer's Dream, which is a band, you know, that is just out there just killing it as far as doing hundreds of shows in their own local area, just, you know, out there busting their butts booking. And, you know, we talk about what it is that makes them successful. So that's a really great day. And then the day that you and I have our conversation is jam-packed too. I mean, we've got Ariel, we've got you, we've got Kevin Bruner, and I think one other, like all on the same day. Wow. So it's crazy. But I mean, pretty much every day is great. Like day one, day two after our opening party, we have a live opening party on the first day. Day two, we have Graham Cochran from Recording Revolution. And he's not just talking about you know recording, which he's known for talking about, but he's really talking about building a business of a business model that works for you as a musician, as a freelancer, kind of compiling some streams of income that will help you live the lifestyle that you want to live without feeling like you're constantly hustling and you know just trying all the time to to figure out where your next dollar is coming from. So that's going to be a really great one. And that's on, that's on day two. And then day three is all about marketing. So that's all the nitty gritty stuff with Indopreneur and Cheryl B. Inglehart talking about email lists, which is such an important conversation. And even talking about chatbots, which mm. is kind of a newer technology that you know some people have really jumped on board with, but some people really don't kind of know how to use that. And, and I'm modeling that with the summit, having reminders with our with our messenger chatbot so you know what's happening every day during the summit and you can kind of experience what it's like to interact with you know on messenger and see how how nice and convenient that is and how you can use that when talking to your fans that's awesome and obviously as we mentioned the summit starts today so as soon as you finish listening to this episode of the podcast or even right now if you've got a computer handy or another device Go and sign up, ProfitableMusicianSummit.com. I'm not going to spell that out to you. <laughs> that, would, that would take me the, the rest of the episode, but ProfitableMusicianSummit.com. Uh, you can sign up on there. You just simply put in your email address and obviously that's how we send you the link so you have, you have access so that you can get in. Then you can join the Facebook group as well. You can start engaging with the speakers, asking questions, meeting other like-minded people in there. And it really is a great community vibe. So I, I highly suggest doing that as well. Obviously, this summit is completely free to view. The only time you would pay is if you want access to this material ongoing after the summit. And I highly suggest that you consider that because it is, it's not an investment in anything other than yourself. So you're spending this money. You already know that there's value in this content. That's when you, it's a no brainer because you're not, you're not paying money and not knowing what you're going to get. You, you've already seen it and, and you want that continued access and you'll get those notes and you'll get invited to that uh, special Q&A as well. So Yeah, and the other thing is on our opening party, we have like 20 prizes to give away that have been given from our speakers. And the way that you're entered to win is if you've purchased the All Access Pass. So we do random number generation, and we're giving out prizes constantly throughout the two-hour opening party. And it's super exciting. I mean, there's prizes worth up to $500 in there. Everything from you know, courses and one-on-one -on -one coaching to books signed by the author and, you know, digital books and just, you know, software and everything. So definitely if you're thinking about the All Access Pass, hopefully that will push you over the edge because you're going to want to win these prizes. And you don't have to be, you don't have to be there to win. You just have to have already purchased the All Access Pass by tonight, Monday night, when we start our opening party at 8 p.m. Eastern. Excellent. And so for this opening party, I mean, it's after five o'clock, so you can celebrate in your own way from home. Oh, and I'm sure I'll be having a glass of wine or a margarita or something. That's how I get through the two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, you know, and it really helps out with the socializing factor as well. So I'm sure right. that there's going to be some fun conversations in there and I encourage people to be yourself and uh, be open to meeting other people and, and, and engaging with them as well because we're all here for the same reason. Yeah, totally. Very cool. Well, 
I just wanted to see if there's anything else that you would like to share with the audience before we wrap this up. It can be some advice that you've recently gotten, whether it's uh, directly related to the music industry or life advice or anything new coming up that you would like to share. You know, I would just say in relation to just generally like my platform and what I stand for and why I put on this summit, I believe that two of the most important things every musician needs is number one, the support of a community, which you can find in the summit as it's going on. And after that, you know, there are many communities you can join, including um, communities of mine or my partner in the summit, Steve Fell Freeman, who has the Music Launch Hub. Um, Mine is the female indie musician community. But a community to me is so important because we as DIYs sometimes feel totally isolated and like nobody understands what we're going through. All these other people have nine to five normal jobs and they don't, you know, get what we're trying to do. They think we're crazy, you know, and having a community of like-minded musicians is so important. And then number two, I think having a mentor, I have seen that with myself and with my students that is really what propels people forward. People that have been stuck in the same place for three years and they get a mentor and after a month, they've done more than they've ever done in three years. And so, you know, find a mentor through this summit that's going to be somebody that you feel like the way they teach, their personality, it just matches you. What what they have to offer is really fitting with what you want to do with your music career right now and, and go and try to work with them. You know, whether that's Rick Barker or Carrie Cole or Mike or me or Steve or anybody that you meet during the summit, find a mentor, get focused, get some goals in place, and that will help you actually take action on everything that you learn. 100% completely agree. I would be nowhere without my mentor. And it, it also keeps you accountable. It's someone that you've you've invested, but they're invested in you as well. Because if they're going to give you all this information and tell you what you need to do, they want to see you actually do it. They want to see you succeed. They believe in you. You don't want to let them down either. So it, a mentor can really motivate you to work even harder and to know that you've got someone there to celebrate with when you have those little wins as well. It's a game changer. Definitely, if you haven't got a mentor, go out there and find one. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. So, Bree, I know we've mentioned, we'll, we'll plug it one more time as well, the ProfitableMusicianSummit.com. Uh, without, it's just Profitable Musician Summit, yes. of course. <laughs> what about your other websites? Where else can people find you and follow you on social media and online? Yeah. So my main site is femmusician.com. That stands for F as in female, E as in entrepreneur, musician.com. And you can find my podcast there and all kinds of blogs and resources that will help you with your music career. You don't have to be a female to learn from that site, but we do have some things that are specific to females. And of course, my Female Musician Academy, if you're looking for a community, like I said, where you can get plugged in and you know get a mentor and get you know, help really moving forward in your music career. That is something that I think you would really enjoy if you're a female artist. Brie, thank you so much for making all of this information available, creating this summit and continuing to empower not just female artists, but all artists as well. I'm truly grateful for being introduced to you and it seems like it came at the right time with this summit coming up. So um, thank you for introducing me to your audience and allowing me to to speak to them and hopefully hit them with a whole bunch of knowledge in this workshop that's coming up. We've said it a million times, but the summit is happening right now. So jump off after this, get online, sign up. You won't be disappointed. Yeah. And if, if you miss the first day, that's okay. Just jump in in the middle. Yeah. If it's, if it's five days after the summit started, it's 10 days long. So you can totally jump in and still learn a ton. Yeah. 10 days of content, 10 yeah. days. I mean, Coachella is six days. So the, <laughs> yeah, no, get on there and get involved. Bree, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I know that it's a crazy time right now. And thank you for talking to the audience and letting them know about this and a little about yourself and what you're doing. And I'm going to jump into the summit right now and get ready for that party and grab myself a nice glass of wine. Sounds good to me. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. 